Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this episode of Video Adrenaline for Creative Cow. Today, we're going to show you a tip that works both in Photoshop and After Effects to fix underexposed footage items. It's really simple, so I just want to jump right in and get it underway. Here we have a photo, and it's a tad dark. Really easy to fix this. Sure, we can go in and start to do other adjustments, like you know curves or levels, and start to play with that, and you know lift up the midtones and guess and say, well, okay, no wait, now pull that back down, and you see how hard it is to start to actually get it to look good. Not a big deal. Let's just go ahead and we'll get rid of those adjustments there. And instead of worrying about trying to find this or pull it up, we're just going to use a simple blending mode. I'll duplicate the layer by pressing Command J for jump a copy. On a PC, that's just Control J. And we'll change that to screen mode. And you see it instantly starts to add up. Now what's happening here is the darker elements are being dropped out and the lighter elements are left behind. So screen is often used to knock out the black in a layer. In this case, it's knocking out all the dark areas and just leaving what's bright about the layer behind, and that starts to add up over time. So if we need to, we can add a second copy there by just continuing to press Command J. Now it is possible to go too far, so I'll just back that down. And when you're satisfied with a good overall exposure, you think it's looking pretty good, I recommend that you go ahead and shift click on all those layers and then right click to convert to a smart object. That's going to take all those layers and nest them together, much like a pre-composition in After Effects. There we go. We can now take advantage of a levels or curves adjustment. There we have it. I'll go ahead and choose Auto. Works pretty well. Take the On Image Adjustment tool there, and I could pull the blacks down a little, lift the midtones up just a hair, pull my highlights down a bit, and it looks pretty good. There's the before and after, just a little tweak, but we recovered the blown out highlights, put a little punch back into the shadows there. You can always, of course, use a levels adjustment if you're more familiar with that. There it is, I'll click Auto, it does a quick white balance at the same time. If I want, I can manually take the black eyedropper and say, this should be black and it quickly does a color balance there, really fixing that color spill. And at any point in time, you can always go in and manually tweak those yourself at a per channel basis if you feel it got a little too strong in one particular channel. That's looking pretty good on the global RGB channel. I'll just adjust that up a little bit. And you see there, pretty dramatic. If you want to, you can go to the history panel, and at the top of the history panel, you'll see where it started. What I'm going to do is take a snapshot so I can quickly toggle between. This is where we are, this is where we started, and as you see there, that's a really quick adjustment for a very underexposed picture. We didn't have any raw data, we were just working with a compressed file, and we were able to rescue it pretty dang well. If I go ahead and close that and save it, we'll go ahead and store that out. It's going to make a layered file, and that's great. Over in After Effects, I could bring that in. There it is. Comes in just fine. I could drop it in a comp. And if at any point I needed to, Command E for Edit Original, I'm back into Photoshop. And as you see, there's our layers intact. In fact, I could even jump into the smart object there, open that up, make a change, close, save, the master comp updates, close and save, switch on back to After Effects, and it updates there as well. So you see a tremendously easy way to jump back and forth. Now you might be thinking, is that just a Photoshop thing or a still photo thing? Absolutely not. Works with footage too. So here I have a shot that's just a little bit underexposed. We were playing it safe when shooting the footage. It was difficult. We had a bright sky, so we wanted to get the sky properly exposed, but we didn't want to let the shadows go completely dark, so we sort of shot for the ugly middle. I can go ahead and select that and hit Command-D for duplicate, and on that duplicate copy, I'm going to set that to screen mode, and you see that the brighter elements start to add up. We can go ahead and duplicate that again if we needed to, 
and if you had to back off the difference, just adjust the opacity of the individual layer there until you get the effect you want. To finesse this out, I'm going to toss on an adjustment layer here, and we'll go for curves to start. There we go. With that curves adjustment, we're just going to go ahead and pull down the highlights a little, lift up the midtones. It's looking pretty good. Little contrast back there in the shadows. And then let's toss on a vibrance adjustment, which does a great job of boosting the non-skin tones there, so we can really get some nice color in the sky and other areas, and we can even warm that up with a little bit of saturation. So there you see, looking pretty good, where we started and where we took it, using the same sort of logic that we did in Photoshop over here in After Effects. So really getting your head wrapped around how blending modes work are going to save you on difficult color correction tasks and take a hard job and make it easy. For more great tips like this, be sure to head on over to creativecow.net where we have an extensive video tutorial and podcast library, as well as subscribe to Creative Cow Magazine so you can find out what other industry pros are up to. Thanks again for joining us. My name's Rich Harrington.